welcome to this week's webinar with me, David Jones, and Aondo Markets. If you're watching the recorded version of this, it was held live on Wednesday, the 29th of November at 12.30 in the afternoon. So this is a webinar to every week on a Wednesday lunchtime with Aondo, and it's a look at um, what's been going on with the major markets, really. It splits down into two parts. We'll take a look at the markets, uh, the major FX pairs, currencies, indices, all of this sort of stuff. And we also do a bit on strategy. And today's strategy session, we're going to talk about the importance of um, money management. Basically, how much do you risk when you're trading? Because I think, in my experience, most people risk um, too much. So we'll spend a bit of time talking about that as well today. There's a lot been going on. Um, it's a massive move um, over the last 24 hours in the pound. It's up about, what, 200 points. So we'll take a look at that because there's some big levels we have gone there. Bitcoin, we'll take a look at that as well, just for uh, the hell of it, is through the 10,000 mark, $10,000 mark. So that continues to go higher. Uh, and we'll have a look at some more traditional markets as well. But um, let's get started. Where are we? Here we are. Okay, so this is Aondo's trading platform. This is Trade Hub. So um, some of you may know Aondo better for uh, follow trading, where you can copy other traders. But of course, you can also do your own self-directed trading as well. Um, and this is this is the platform you'd use. So let, let's start off by looking at the pounds. Um, oh, why has it done that? Hold on a second. I do have this, this weird issue now and again where it doesn't want to uh, maximize itself. There we go. It's done it. Um, Let's just look at the move, first of all, since yesterday. And it, it was all off the back. Here we go. So this, this was uh, yesterday, pound US dollar. So the market uh, was trading around about 33.80 the day before yesterday uh, and sold off pretty steadily yesterday down towards the 132.30 area. Then late last night, well, late for the London market, at about half five um, last night, we had this news that the, the Brexit divorce settlement uh, negotiations were, were sort of, it looks like the, the, the EU had been offered a number they were happy with, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, the, the price rocketed. So we saw the pound trade up really quickly from 132.40 back above 133. A fair bit of volatility after it, but um, we have seen it continue to build on these gains. So we're trading at 134. So clearly that, that's taken away from the market's point of view, at least, some of the uncertainty about these Brexit negotiations, but um, let's let's take a look at the bigger picture and what this means. Um, it doesn't change that trend. That trend we've been banging on about this all year, or I have anyway. Uh, that the trend for the pound, you know, has been one of recovery, and that's that's still very much the case. So I think you know we're coming to the end of the year now. Going into next year, still be expecting further recovery for the pound, and I think medium term. Pound against the US dollar, the obvious target has to be a run back up to 136, 136.50. These these are big levels because these are the sort of the post EU referendum highs up around here, something like that. So I think if we can move, <coughs> excuse me, if we move above 136.50 sometime early next year, or maybe before the end of this year, um, you see it as bullish. You know, it it suggests the next leg is underway, classic breakout. And we can start maybe a move into the 140s. But for now, any weakness, pound US dollar, like it has been for much of this year, remains a buying opportunity. The move over the last couple of days, or the last week or so, is interesting because the pound had been stuck in this sideways range. To bring it back to maybe a more of a short term point of view, we'd see the pound since October um, just trapped. Uh, 130 was big support. We had the trend line coming in as well. We saw quite a few tests of the 130 area, but it really couldn't get through 133.40. It fails there in October, failed again beginning November, looked like it was failing a week ago or a week and a half ago, and it's broken through. So this is this is really bullish, but I think it's it, it's hard to trade after a move like yesterday, I think, because, because it's currently, what, a couple of hundred points nearly above yesterday's lows, I think it's a difficult one to trade from here. So whilst I think it is going to go higher in the weeks ahead, um, you know, maybe it's a little bit overcooked and we could do with something of a pullback. So the risk is, and you know, if we wait for the pullback, if the market zooms another 200 points from here, it'd miss out on it. 
Um, but in terms of risk reward, I'd rather be a buyer if you got a pullback, maybe back to 133 and then saw the strength coming back in, maybe coinciding with some stochastic action down here. So these are the, the slow stochastics. You see very overbought, not surprisingly, because of this move, because of this sharp move up we've seen. So it is going up. I think it's going up. <laughs> um, it's just a question, I think, of um, do we just jump on now? after the breakout and think, okay, we're off to the races, or do we wait to see how the market reacts after a, a somewhat peculiar 24 hours? Um, but, but either way, I think medium term, assuming 130 continues to hold, that trend's intact, 136.5 is the target. If we break that, then 140 after that. So it does look um, bullish for the pound for further doodars recovery in the pound. So um, actually on the dailies, the stochastic's a bit, bit overbought and about to give a sell signal by the looks of it as well. So um, that does add maybe a bit of weight to the market needing to cool off from here, but all positive. Let's take a look at, at Euro dollar. Then we'll look at Euro pound actually. Euro dollar has been, I think, I think it's been a bit of a tricky one uh, to trade. Let's, let's just go to the dailies on Euro dollar. This is the dailies. So I think we've had, from a, from a sort of charty point of view, a bit of a messy uh, couple of months for Euro dollar because we had, we had this trend that had been in place since uh, since April-ish, and the market rallied up, broke out of the trend in September, but we did have uh, the old lows from back here, uh, around about what, 116.60, they held, the market bounces, goes crashing through, looks like a breakout, rallies a bit, breaks a bit lower. So I was completely wrong-footed uh, by this because it breaks out, the market rallies and pushes lower. You'd expect, okay, here we go. We're going to start trending lower. But there's an example where it didn't move. And since then, you know, it rallied 300 points higher. So we've had a breakout the other way on euro dollar through this old 119 level that had been a problem. So it's broken out, spent a couple of days above it, and it started pulling back. I think this is maybe more tradable at the moment than pound US dollar, because if we're going to categorize that as a false break down here below 116, then the market really shouldn't be going back to test or push or definitely not push through these lows if it's a false break. So, so I think for me, why this is maybe a bit more interesting is uh, looking to buy into this new trend. So let's let's flip this over to the hourlies and, and see if we can pick up some levels. Okay, so here's, here's the old false break down here. So this is an hourly chart we're looking at now. So there's the break down there. Let's just pick up on what these things actually look like. So we can plonk our, our squiggly trend uh, in there. So I think it's interesting, you know, we've got, we've got this rally now that's been in place for just over three weeks. The market has moved about 400 points. We're selling off, we're selling off a bit. So we've sold off about 120 points from that height. And it makes it, I think, an interesting one to watch uh, down here. I suppose the aggressive trade, if you thought, this trend line was going to hold now, you'd be a buyer now at 118.33 with a stop loss, I don't know, maybe the other side of the trend line. Um, but I think maybe the more, the more patient trade, and we don't have to be that patient, but first of all, let's see this afternoon, well, it's only five points above it. Does, do, 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 if I can actually speak, do those lows from yesterday hold? So 18.27, I think if they break, then we have to wait, uh, wait for maybe another buying opportunity. That The better place to have a stop we down here but it's a it's a bit of a way away well it's quite a way away it's still about 100 points away from where we're trading now but i think euro dollar it's pretty interesting uh down at these levels because we've had this uh this messy shenanigans back here the market's rallied uh but we're still within that overall uptrend so um i would be expecting euro dollar to snap back of it uh, from these levels. Um, so let's see. Let's see what happens. I think it's an interesting one to watch. Normally, of course, this Friday is the, it's the 1st of December on Friday. Uh, that would normally be non-farm payrolls, uh, but they're not until a week on Friday. So there's not a, nothing major, I don't think, coming out in terms of economic announcements. Or I, or I think, is it the Fed minutes tonight? Do we get those tonight or am I getting confused? Anyway, so um, let's see. Let's see what happens with euro dollar down at these levels, but I think it's pretty interesting and that trend still very much intact. So for me, the obvious target is going to be a run back up to these highs, just shy of 1970. If we flip it over to the dailies, then I think, assuming this this is, this was a false break, then 121 is the bigger, the longer term target. So I think it'd be tempted to be a buyer 
on weakness. And just, just to finish this, this off, this euro and the pound, I thought because of the pound surge yesterday, it'd be interesting to look at euro sterling and see how that looks. Not much has changed. You know, we're, um, we're just a bit sideways, aren't we? You know, we, we, I think I was saying last week, what a good job 87 has done uh, since, since June of this year. So 87 is a big level for euro sterling. Big turnaround yesterday, of course, on the, on the sterling strength. But again, you know, maybe you want to think about being a buyer. You know, if we thought the pound was maybe a little bit overcooked from the move yesterday, the euro is still within that trend. Maybe over the next few days, we're going to see some euro sterling strength coming back and maybe targeting a run back up to 90, 90 40 ish that sort of area. But um, clearly, this is massive level to watch, I think, 87.20 on um, Euro Sterling. Uh, so that's, that's our little bit on the currencies. Um, what else should we look at? Let's, I mean, I think Dollar Swiss is interesting. Dollar Swiss has been, I think I might have missed this, though. Dollar Swiss has been an interesting one, because if we look at the bigger picture on Dollar Swiss, what I want to look at is the last year and a half. In recent weeks, Dollar Swiss has turned around sort of roughly where it was last year. So last year was a big level, down at 94.50 to 95.50, this sort of area, and the market turned around. Uh, it was really weak for much of this year, but again, has done the same thing, has turned around in that same zone, and we've seen a strong bounce back, and it has been correcting, and I was waiting for a chance to buy in. So let's just flip this over to the dailies. And it has rallied the last three days, and I think maybe the opportunity here is, because the, this was, you know, quite a big big zone of support. If we saw dollar Swiss maybe trade back towards 98, maybe we get a second bite of the cherry looking for a move back up to parity, so where one dollar is worth one, one Swiss franc. But I think that's maybe an interesting longer term one where we've seen a definite turnaround during the summer in the same place it turned around uh, last summer. Um, we'll, we'll have a quick look at, let's have a look at Bitcoin and then we'll, um, we'll have a look at, we'll, we'll talk about strategy. Have I got Bitcoin on here? I haven't got Bitcoin on my list. Hang on a sec.
So, right. Um, Assuming you're still there, <laughs> I think. Right, I'm back. I think we had a bit of a, a bit of a technical problem. The internet went down here, but we'll uh, we'll carry on. So um, I think everyone's still there. So thanks for your patience. Let's get let's get back onto this. Hold on a second. The office I'm in, the uh, internet has suddenly decided to die. So what we're we going to look at? We're going to look at Bitcoin, won't we? So let's bring up the crazy Bitcoin market. Um, it's it's fascinating Bitcoin. It is like oh, it. See, look at it. It has its hit fresh all time highs again. Um, it's like it is like the Nasdaq in the late 90s on steroids or crack or whatever your particular euphemism is. Um, and I've been buying the breakouts uh, since about, I don't know, September. But I'm paranoid about waking up one day and seeing it down 90%. This is amazing. This It only broke 10,000 yesterday and it's now above uh, 11,000. Um, is it a bubble? I think it is a bubble. Uh, yeah, the definition of a bubble is um, where uh, an asset price increases incredibly rapidly or a great percentage with little in the way of fundamentals. Now, you know, I really don't see what the fundamental argument for Bitcoin to have doubled in the last two and a half weeks is. Uh, call me a dinosaur, but um, you know, I really do think what's driving this market is very much, you know, the, the, the FOMO effect, the fear of missing out. You know, people like me will sit there and poo-poo it and say it's ridiculous. See the market go up 100%. Think, no, this is ridiculous. Goes up 100%. Think, all right, I've got to buy some. And I think it's this. It's definitely this that's fueling it. But it is a fascinating market. Um, just, it's just, just how it actually moves. Um, so here we are at 11,000. Um, I think it's an incredibly hard market to trade because just because of the volatility. The volatility is ridiculous. You know, any market that drops 30% in five days, then rallies 50% in four days and moves what? What's, what's it moved the last two days? It's, it's moved 1,500 points. It's moved, what, 15%, 16%, 17% since Monday. Um, you know, and, it, and I think a lot, there is going to be tears at the end when Bitcoin goes pop. But maybe, it, maybe it'll go to 100,000 before it goes pop. But it's... Um, I don't know. It's, it's it's a funny old market. But let's look. Let's look at the more sensible world of um, trading. Let's let's talk about money management. Let's do our little little bit on money management. So I'm gonna I'm gonna flip the screens over here and see if this works. And just talk a bit about a sensible approach to money management. So uh, let's just bring this up. Bring up the sketchpad thing. So hopefully that all works. Yeah. I think that's all working, isn't it? It should be. Um, Oh, if I didn't click off. So I think it's no secret that most people lose money when they're trading. Uh, this is this will always be true. You know, it's a fact of life. Whether you're trading Bitcoin, mind you, no one's lost money on Bitcoin if they bought it, or you know, just traditional trading, you're going to lose money. And I think I think one of the things that contributes is that people really don't think about money management. You know, so there is there is a sensible approach to money management when you're trading, and there's the gung ho risk everything approach, which I think is something that a lot of people do. So the sensible approach is, let's say your trading pot is, um, why am I doing it in dollars? <laughs> let's say your trading pot is £10,000. Um, the sensible approach says, well, if on any one trade it should only cost you sort of, I don't know, well, up to maybe 2.5% risk, maybe, that's 2.5%, not 25% risk. So you should only risk that percentage of your trading pot on any one trade. So if you're trading with 10 grand, it means if any one trade goes wrong, it should only cost you 250 quid. And the reason, and, and, the, and the reason for this is, is to ensure longevity. You know, you will have runs of losing trades. Uh, and if you're risking 10% of your account, and you have 10 losing trades on the trot, you're wiped out. You know, at least this way, you've still got some some skin in the game, some money left. But people hate this. People hate hearing about this. A maximum risk of two and a half percent of your pot on any one trade because it means they can't get rich quick. Get can't get rich quickly. But let's not forget. You know, 80% of people lose money trading. If you looked at it over a year, you know, you'd be, you, if you two out of ten people might make a profit, and, and a big contributor to that is I think people risk far too much money. So this doesn't mean that you have 2.5% stops. Okay, It doesn't mean that, but it does mean it, it does equate to your financial risk. So to walk through an example, let's say 
we were going to buy the Dow. So let's say the Dow was trading at 23,000 for the sake of making the maths easy for me. And we decide to have our stop loss. Let's say I entered the low from a couple of days ago. So I'm going to make this up. I, I'm going to pretend the low from the Dow from a couple of days ago was 22,750. There we go. Let's make no 780 to make the maths really easy for me. So that's been a low from the last couple of days. So I'm going to buy the Dow because I think it's going to go up. And I'm going to put my stop loss a little bit below there. So my stop is going to go in at 22,750. So that's the stop. So my risk on the trade, coincidentally, if I'm a buyer at 23,000 with a stop at 22,750, I've got a 250 point risk. Now, if I'm trading with a 10 grand account and only risking 2.5% on any one trade, well, if my stop loss is 250 points away, then I'm going to trade one pound a point. That's the maximum size I'm allowed to take. Of course, if I was trading with, let me just rub that out, a thousand pound account, and was employing sensible risk management and only wanted to risk losing two and a half percent, then two and a half percent of a thousand quid is 25 quid. So with a 250 point stop, I need to a broker where I can trade 10p per point. And it's this stuff that people hate because everyone thinks, oh God, it's going to take me forever to turn my thousand pound account into two million if I'm trading 10p a point. But let's not forget, most people lose. You know, so, so the name of the game for us has to be survival. So we have to be able to withstand a, a long losing streak against us. And it's, it's so important, this. It's, and I think it's boring, but it's important. You know, it's not as exciting as putting three different indicators on your chart, putting some Fibonacci lines on Bitcoin and thinking about, is it gonna, is it gonna double in the next couple of weeks? But it is the sensible approach. You know, it's the sensible thing to do to say, okay, I've got X as a trading pot, whatever X is, how much am I willing to risk on any one trade? And most sensible approaches, just to ram home the message again, you know, suggest that at a maximum, you should be risking losing 2.5% of your account on any one trading idea. Okay, so that's that. So if you're not doing that already, I really would suggest you think about it because it's just it's just a numbers thing. You know, if you're trading, um, sort of, if you're an active trader, but you're risking losing 10, 15% of your account, trust me, the maths are against you, you know, and you will get, you will, you're running a really high level, a high risk of ruin. Okay, so you want to think about the size you're trading. So that's our little money management session for today. Okay, so um, let's just recap where we were before we got, got cut off. So I think Euro dollar is an interesting one. So Euro dollar looking for uh, a bit of strength to come back in because that trend has been up since the false break. And you know, we're seeing a little bit of strength ahead of the, the lows from yesterday. So that's interesting. Pound against the dollar, maybe a little bit overcooked and uh, needs to correct. Um, let's talk about indices. Um, of course, what have the US stock markets done? They've done what they always do. They have gone out to fresh all-time highs. This is incredible. This, this is like I think I put it on Twitter. I think the S&P 500 is, uh, is is Bitcoin for the more mature investor because it does just go up every day, but it goes up a little bit slower. We've seen, I've seen some incredible moves um, to just in recent months. You know, if we, we go back to the summer when the S&P was trading around about the 2400 mark, at the moment in the out-of-hours market, uh, I think it has touched 2630. So we've seen a 10% move in the S&P just over the last three months. You know, these are these are big moves. And again, I think I think it's I think it's hard to trade. I don't trade it much, to be honest. But I think it is hard to trade because I think, as I was, as I was saying last week, you have days where you just get very little volatility. Then it just takes off. Yeah. So you're either in it for the takeoff, or you're not. And when it takes off, it's I think it's it's quite it can be quite hard maybe to buy into that strength. But again, a simple breakout strategy. You know, works as, as long as you've got the patience to give the market a bit of room. You know, if it breaks out through um, through previous highs, this is what's this we're looking at an hourly chart. If it breaks out through previous highs, we need to give it a bit of a wiggle room. You know, we need to have so if, we, if we're buying a breakout, if I was buying a breakout, then I'd personally want at the very least, you know, a stop loss below the low of that day or the low of the previous day, ideally. So we need to be, you know, for me, if I'm trading a breakout like that. I need to be in it for maybe a few days of the move and you get some right messing about, but eventually it does take off. It's an incredibly strong market. You know, again, it's a, it's a market that people absolutely love to bet against. And I know we look at this every week, but just look at that trend. That is a market that is an uptrend. Um, and like Bitcoin, I think whenever the correction comes, it's going to be a big one, you know, but 
it could go up another 30%, it could go up for another three years from here, you know, there, there, there just continues to be any weakness, any sell-off just brings more buyers out for US stock markets, it really is um, it's quite incredible. Let's take a look at the Dow, so here's the, uh, there we go, there's the, so there's the Dow breakout, this is on a daily chart, the Dow, and of course breakouts are always easy in hindsight, aren't they, but we had the highs up there, 23.6, with the highs from um, earlier in November, faffed around a bit, failed a little bit there, bang, away it goes, and it's you know what, hundred points higher again uh, within, a, within a day of, of breaking out. You know, an incredibly strong market. Uh, and I think if we, if you are worried about you know the potential for a crash or something, it's very rare that we will all walk in one day. The market made all-time highs yesterday, and today it's down fifteen percent. You know, we normally get reasonable warning of when markets are starting to roll over. And I would just look at things like previous lows. You know, if we saw the Dow turn around from here and go crashing back through 23,250, that's the first level to keep an eye on. But we've got so many pockets of support left back here. You just you have to be a buyer in these markets. You know, as a good trend follower, the trend is most definitely up. You know, so what we'd want to be is be a buyer. Listen, we'll have a look at the FTSE, then we'll have a look at the DAX, then we'll look at gold and oil, because I think they're a bit more interesting. The FTSE, see the FTSE again, this is showing, so we've got US markets out to fresh all-time highs yesterday. This is showing why the FTSE is such an odd market, because of course, so many FTSE 100 components derive their earnings from overseas, so what scuppers them? Strong pounds. So when we have a day like yesterday, where the pound uh, moves 200 points or two cents, it puts pressure on the FTSE, so you can see the FTSE, this is a, this is a daily chart, the FTSE is down today from yesterday's close, um, because we've seen that, that pound strength overnight. It, it really is, it, you'd be really disappointed if as an investor you'd put your entire pension in the FTSE this year, because everything else is dragged higher, but the FTSE still struggles with this big old level. I mean, you still make money, but you'd be better off having it in the S&P or the Dow. Um, this this 7600 mark on the FTSE, you know, still can't still can't get through it. But it really is an odd one because it is so skewed by what's going on uh, with um, the pound. I suppose you could say, looking at the hourlies here, you know, there's a, there's an opportunity to maybe be to be a buyer. We've had this this whole sideways thing going on for the last couple of weeks uh, in the sort of 7345, 7350 area. If we thought, okay, the mark, this market is eventually going to get dragged higher by U.S. markets, we could be a buyer now. Stops somewhere below here, so the stops are only 60, 70 points away. If we think it's going to run back up uh, to those those old highs up at 7,600, so there's arguably a trading opportunity here. And the price action is encouraging. You know, we're seeing it sort of having a go at breaking out, selling off, pushes higher. So for me, for my money. I think we'll see the FTSE go up 200 points before we see it go down 200 points from here. Uh, famous last words. Let's put some uh, some squiggles on here. Let's go back into my old favourite, the RSI. Let's see what that looks like. There we go. Is, is it a 10 day, 10 hour? Let's flip it over to 10. There we go. So um, I mean that the RSI is is sort of supporting the argument here. I think uh, that that maybe we should, you know it's just a correction and off we go again. You know maybe a bit more of a a bullish move for the FTSE, particularly if US stock markets go up, particularly if the pound gave up some of yesterday's gains, you know, we could see the FTSE squeeze a bit higher from here. Let's have a look at the DAX, then we'll have a look at the uh, the commodities. So the DAX, I mean the DAX is a properly volatile market, I think, when it comes to indices. Um, let's have a look on the dailies on the DAX, here we go. So just since August, the market's moved well, we traded in a range of about what 1,500 points or so from 11.9 up above 13,400. Came back down to the old supports again, the old big levels, the old breakout area, all that usual stuff, and has found support and has pushed back up. Um, let's take a look on the hourly. So, so the argument would be if you thought clearly, well, clearly trends in stock markets are still up. You know, so for a longer term position, be a buyer here with a stop loss under there, but it looks a little bit too wide, maybe. If we have a look on the hourlies, you can see what well, maybe maybe it's another breakout trade. You know, maybe we've seen what a problem on the way down 1300 was for the DAX. So uh, maybe that's the signal that we're going to have a run back at those old highs. Uh, so 13.2, I think, is an obvious big level to watch on the DAX. And 
after the moves we've seen this week in US stock markets, you could say, well, they are a bit overextended. It's a dangerous thing to say, I think, when it comes to US stock markets, because they'll just slap you in the face and move higher. So maybe we, maybe if we did get a bit of weakness over the next couple of days, we'll see the market unwind maybe back to here, and there's a better, better opportunity to buy in. Um, but 13.2, I think, is the big, the big level for the DAX. Let's look at um, gold and oil. I think these, these are interesting markets. Price of gold, the price of oil, stripping out some of the, the stock market lunacy. Um, but let's let's take a look on the dailies for gold because there's that. It's worked well. This stuff, this this trading idea we were looking at, I think back in October, where you know gold was coming off the highs for the year, so it set fresh highs for the year in September. It sold off. No market moves in a straight line. Rallies comes back, retests the perfect opportunity uh, to get in ahead of 12.60 support. Faffs around a bit. But it's moving higher, you know. So I think, so I think for me, I still want to be a buyer on weakness, looking for the market to go back to 13.60, assuming it holds above 12.60. But let, let's have a look on the hourly charts on the price of gold. It's maybe been a little bit quiet last couple of days, but you know we've got a definite trend in place off these lows. It's maybe we seem to get sharp moves and sideways moves, and not much else going on. But I think if we saw it push lower from here back to the 12.70s. It looks like a buying opportunity just with a reference back to that big chart, that big level of 12.60. I think. I think if only if it starts to lose 12.60, do we have to worry about more of a deeper sell-off? But for now, even though it's been a bit quiet, it's all um, it's all still positive. And finally, oil. I must admit, I've not looked at this since the last webinar, but there we go. Fresh all-time highs. Uh, so we saw fresh all-time highs last week on oil. And again, yeah, it, it just it, it it's all about the trend, isn't it? It's all about uh, what happened with the trend since since the summer? So since it was trading at about forty two and a half dollars a barrel, we've seen this market uh, move higher. We've we've cracked the highs from the beginning of the year, and I, I think I said coming into this year, I thought we'd be in the mid sixties for oil by the summer, you know. But it spent much of the year in decline, and it only really turned around since June. So I think on oil. You know, you have to be a buyer. Let's let's take a look on the hourlies and take a look at some of the levels. Um, oh, that's a bit messy, isn't it? Let's have a look. Do we go maybe? I, well, I suppose actually. Well, there, there's a level. There's. I suppose if you want to be aggressive, we've got the lows back from uh, the 22nd of November, $57, $57.30. Has been good support. Good support back there. Good support. When was that? Yesterday, and good support again today. Um, Bit of resistance up here. Maybe we'll get another chance to buy in, but I think um, you know, just based on that bigger picture for oil, that's that does look like a really, really positive chart. And any weakness, particularly back to the mid 50s, I think looks like a good buying opportunity to buy into that trend. Um, so um, that's it. We'll start wrapping things up here. But I think I think maybe the immediate one for me is that euro dollar chart. You know, because we are um, because it's been such a messy few few weeks um, but we're back we're back in that uptrend thing will it hold above the lows from yesterday but the uptrend since the false breakout is still going strong so maybe that's the more immediate thing how the pound reacts after this massive surge we saw yesterday so for my money I think we'll see a bit of pound unwinding uh, from here um, but let's see let's see what happens and I'm sure when we come back and do this next next week Bitcoin will be 25,000 or something ridiculous for that. Uh, we'll wrap things up there. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for putting up with the introduction. The interruption, not the introduction. I'll go and see if I can uh, fix the internet now. Um, but uh, any questions after this, just drop me an email. David at tradeafter.com is the best email for me. You can follow me on Twitter for sort of chart on big levels uh, during the week. But I think Euro Dollar is maybe the more interesting one to watch uh, at the moment. And um, we'll wrap things up there. So thanks again. And we'll do this all again next Wednesday. <laughs> Someone's going all in on Bitcoin. Okay, well, hopefully, well, this time next week, we, we could all be millionaires or homeless. I think it's a pretty uh, binary trade, Bitcoin, isn't it? Okay, I'll stop the recording there and um, we'll do it all again next week. <laughs>